does Azure Machine Learning lock your ML projects in the platform? Apparently it locks me. Why are you putting this stuff on me? Oh, sorry. Wow, MG the magician. So the answer is no, it won't. Let's be serious. With using MLflow in your machine learning experiments, you can lift and shift them to Azure ML or from Azure ML without changing any single line of code. Shall we check? You won't tie my hand. Sure. Let's go. Hello everyone and welcome back. This is MG and thanks for watching this video. We are going to talk about how MLflow is integrated with Azure Machine Learning, which enables us to have a vendor agnostic solution over Azure ML. That means with using MLflow, I can lift and shift my machine learning experiments from Azure ML to any platform, let's say Databricks or even your laptop. And even I can move my MLflow experiments from other platforms, other environments to Azure Machine Learning and integrate that with great capabilities that the platform can provide. Let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, welcome to my Azure Machine Learning workspace. And before we get a start, let's talk about how Azure ML is enabling us for making sure that we are not tied to this platform. If I develop any machine learning use case somewhere else, I can just lift and shift it to Azure, Azure ML. Or if I develop in Azure ML, how, I do, how I'm guaranteed that I can lift and shift that use case from Azure ML to somewhere else, any other platform, my laptop. So the key point here to be able to do so is MLflow. Then the question is, what is MLflow? Well, if you're not familiar with MLflow, MLflow is an open source framework. It's like a library that you get installed in the server because it is designed to manage the complete machine learning lifecycle. So what does that mean? Its ability to train and save models on different platforms will allow all of us to avoid vendor lock-ins, which is here, for example, Azure ML, and move freely from one platform to another. So with MLflow, you can track your models, allow experiments to get recorded, tracked, and you can even compare the parameters and metrics coming from each, each uh, experiment of machine learning experience, experiments that you're doing. It has model registry capability. So with MLflow, you can register your models as a central model store to manage the governance of your model's lifecycle end-to-end. -end. So with the definition of project also in MLflow, you can package your ML code and make it reusable so you ship that package somewhere else, you can reproduce it with other data scientists or transfer it to production. So you can see that MLflow is an open source package that end-to-end -end cover your machine learning lifecycle. Now, when it's tied to ML Azure Machine Learning, that means it can be used anywhere because MLflow is open source, you can just try it in any place. But the nice thing is, because it is added to Azure ML, you, it means that you will be able to have the capabilities of MLflow plus the capabilities of Azure ML added to your MLflow journey. Let me make it more clear. Let's say you're using MLflow as of now on your laptop. You're training models, deploying models. Actually, you track the models using MLflow, register it there. Now, if you do the same thing and just lift and shift the same thing with no change of code to Azure ML, you will have more capabilities when you deploy the model. So we have already talked about manage endpoints, which is just a click with no code, you can deploy the model. So if you're using MLflow in Azure ML, now you have a no code solution for deploying the models plus MLflow capabilities. So we can see how Azure ML capabilities can be a platform that complement your MLflow capabilities. So I'm talking too much. Let's go and see it in action, but just wanted to provide an overview of why we value MLflow in Azure ML, what would be the benefit here? 
and let's see how it's gonna look like when we talk about ML flow in Azure ML. So I went through an example, a notebook example. I ran it just before actually record the video here. So what I'm doing is okay, let me make sure that I'm opening the right notebook. I think so. Yeah, there you go. So here I'm I'm training a model using ML flow actually for logging everything and then registering my model and then we'll see how it's gonna look like in Azure ML. So the model that I'm training is predicting heart disease. Actually it's just a binary classification. No presence or presence of the heart disease out of almost 76 attributes but just subset of them which is 14 has been used in this example. So uh, in order to make sure I have the dependencies in place, there is a text file coming in and by the way, I'll add the, the link of this code and notebook to the video description. So this text file, which is here, contains the packages needed actually to uh, create this. And you can see MLflow, of course, is needed. So after installing them, I'm just ignoring some warnings. Anyways, there you go. The first thing that I do, importing MLflow. I'm assuming that MLflow is already installed in the compute engine of Azure ML that I'm running. So I'm just importing that. And I should give you the name to this machine learning experiment that I'm going to track it using MLflow. So I give it a name, heart condition classifier. The data is open source. So it's a heart disease CSV. You can see that these are all those 14 sort of features that we talked about. And the target is just yes or no, zero or one. So classification, which is going to be predicted. Um, we are doing some categorical features embedding. I'm just quickly pathing through that. And then I'm splitting the train and test. Very typical thing that we do for training models. And the nice thing is in AutoML, there's something called auto lock. It's not supported for all machine learning algorithms. There's a list actually what auto lock is supporting. So XGPoost is one of them that auto lock is supported. So with doing so, you don't need to specifically say, hey, MLflow, I'm gonna lock this. I'm gonna lock the accuracy of the model. I'm gonna lock this picture, this ROC curve. Just give it auto log, and auto log will handle everything on backend. It will log everything without you needed to change anything in the code. So when I execute this, I am happy. I'm not going to do anything else for logging. So I'm calling my model. I'm importing from extra boost and say, hey, MLflow, start the run. So from here, it will start actually logging and do everything. So I'm doing the model fit. This is train and test. I'm not saying MLflow that, hey, log what I need, but everything gonna be logged here. What is the model get trained? What are the hyperparameters chosen? What is the train data, test data, so on and so forth. And if you want to log some extra metrics, specific metrics, you can do so definitely. So for example, here I am creating the accuracy and recall score as my own extra metrics to calculate them, but I'm not saying MLflow that, hey, lock them. So I'm just calculating them. But on back end, because it uses auto lock, it will actually lock them without me specifically saying it. Done. So accuracy and recall are now locked for me and I just executed and checked the, the performance, but regardless. And then I'll say, hey, MLflow, end the run, I'm done. So each run has an ID. You can get the, the ID of the latest run here and with referring to that ID, you can reproduce all the package again. So uh, here I am getting the parameters got locked with the given ID, run ID. You can see that all this information got locked for me without necessarily me asking because auto lock did it for me. And the metrics that we calculated together here, without even saying it, it got locked as well. Look at that accuracy and recall and it knows that I use the X test data so it automatically added this to the name as well which is great so now what we're going to do I want to check when we say that we have outputted uh, experiments with MLflow format what are the artifacts get locked right so one of them is this model the PKL file of the model get locked that's it this is what MLflow does no because if we say that MLflow make our machine learning experiment reproducible, that means all the artifact needed to reproduce everything should be locked. Model is one thing, 
but also we need to log what packages we pip installs we install to train this model so we can have them in another platform to reproduce it if we're going to move from azure ml to another platform or coming to azure ml so model pickle file is not the only thing that azure the ml flow log whole package is logged to make everything reproducible so let's check what those artifacts are if it is just not model so i'm connecting to my ml flow tracking uh, client here i'm using azure ml as the server of my ml flow you know that ml flow need a server so azure ml by itself is providing the service here and i'm here is listing all the run ids that i have uh, the artifacts that i have with the given run id and this run id is coming from the latest run that i did which was that training and you can see that it's not just model model is just a path by itself that has the model pickle files everything there but there check i have some metric info in a json file i have feature importance generated in a picture in a json format as well that tell me what features very important for the model to get trained right and i can even download them with this the the client of my symbol flow with download artifact object that i'm calling and i give it a path and i'm done and if you want to check that feature importance that got generated automatically by the ML flow, there you go. You can see this is the plot here. And for loading the model back, of course, ML flow will lock the model. So the only thing that you need to do is say, hey, ML flow, I have a model that you outputted for me before in XGPoost format. So just load it back to me with the given variety that I'm giving you. All the models usually they go under model folder. That's how ML flow output the model. That's why the model parameter is here in the path. And we can then do a quick prediction, just my loaded model dot predict. Wherever I am, if I call this ML flow server, let's say now I'm in my laptop, I connect to this ML flow server and I load the model and I do the prediction. That's it. So I'm not going through the codes of this part, but just very quickly telling you that usually but for training machine learning models, we do some pre-processing. And when you do the inferencing or the scoring, you have to do those pre-processing again. So you have to duplicate the codes, but it's not a best practice. What you can do instead, instead of just logging the model, you can pick a serialize and log the model plus pre-processing codes. So when you say classifier.predict, it's not just a model. It will do the pre-processing and then plus prediction for you. And this is actually an example how to do it. You have to define it in the pipeline. Here, for example, encoding was a pre-processing step. And we define that as the, the classifier that has also the pre-processing embedded already. And you can see that I define it as a pipeline. And then I register this pipeline and load it back again to do the prediction which is very typical similar to what we did. So instead of saying classifier to predict, I call a pipeline that has pre-processing plus the model dot predict. So I'm not going to write down the pre-processing codes again when I am doing the predictions. So now we said that MLflow is integrated with Azure ML. If I register the model in MLflow format, it should be registered in Azure ML, right? Let's check it out. I go to the model section Remember, we gave a name to our MLflow experiment, heart disease. There you go. It's already here with the run ID that we know, and it got registered for me. If I click on that, it will sell, say that it is MLflow format created by me with that time, with the given name. And now I can have my complementary capabilities from Azure ML on the top of open source MLflow, which is one of them is deploying with no code. I can deploy to real time. We already covered in a separate video what is rollout deployment, green and blue deployment. We can have it all there, which is great. And if let, later on you want to move out of Azure ML, you just need to download basically this package of MLflow outputted format and reproduce it anywhere you want. Why you can reproduce it? Because whatever you need to reproduce these experiments and training is already packed in a zip file in ml full format i just downloaded it and look at that model is just one thing you have the environment the packages the definitions of metadata the yaml file of python environment and requirement text which is the basically packages needed and if you have it 
go ahead deploy and reproduce this model wherever you want so you are not you are actually platform agnostic and you are not tied to any specific vendor here it's just azure ml so that's how you have the full flexibility through embracing uh, embracing open source within Azure ML ecosystem. And you know that MLflow is also very well tied with Databricks as well. So these two can be certainly connected as a centralized place to track everything and have the end-to-end -end governance with MLflow that is open source and can work anywhere plus Azure ML as well. And that's all about this video. Always have eyes that see the best. A heart that forgives the worse, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses hope.